new series called Hearing from God. And I'm so excited about this series for a lot of reasons, um, but I'm, I'm really excited because there have been times in my life where I was like just so desperately needing to hear from God. Have you guys ever had those moments in life? Are you in one of those moments right now where you're like, there's a lot of stuff going on in your life and you're like, I would love some guidance. I would love to figure out how to do this. And there's a lot of questions that come up when we talk about this is like, how, how do we hear from God? Like, can you hear from God? Are there ways that you can actually, is there anything in your life that you can do to, to kind of drown out the noise of other things so that you can actually hear the voice of God even better in your life? And it's my hope in this series that we're in, it's a four-week series, it's my hope that at the end of this, you will learn how you can actually hear God speak to you in your life. And how and, and the, the cool thing about God is that he will show up. And he will guide you if you want him to do it. And so this series, we're really just going to like take a look at how God speaks to us. But one of the things about this series that I'm really excited about is at the very end of the series, three weeks from today, we're actually going to be doing something pretty cool. We have, uh, uh, we're, we're going to be interviewing my former pastor and current dad, uh, Eddie Lyons. And we're also going to be interviewing our current pastor and Evan Gardner's current dad, uh, Bruce Gardner. And uh, we're going to have a little pastor panel, and we're going to be able to ask all these questions that you may have to the, two of the smartest, wisest, most godly men that I know, all around the topic of hearing God and God's will, and how do you discern the voice of God. And so what's cool is that if you scan this right here, so everybody take your phone out, take your phone out, it's okay. Um, I know you're going to look at Instagram at some point in the message, might as well just start now, you know. Um, but you can take a picture, and you can like actually submit anonymously uh, uh, a question that I could ask, and so I'm going to be able to give, uh, give like, you know, ask a bunch of questions, and I want to be able to answer some of the questions that you may have, um, so that's going to be really, really fun. You're not going to want to miss that. Uh, Bruce is hilarious, so you're ne- you never want to miss anything with Bruce, and you get to meet my dad, and I think he's awesome, so it's going to be a really cool thing, but here's what I know. No, no matter where you're at in your the spectrum of your walk with God, whether you're like not even a Christian, or whether you you are a Christian, this idea is of if there was a God, like if there was just like a a chance that God was real, wouldn't you want to have him talk to you? Wouldn't you want to be able to like hear what he would have to say? If this God that we talk about was real, even if there was a small microscopic percentage that he was real, wouldn't you want to get to know what he has to tell you? I would imagine and I would assume that many of us in here would say, yeah, no matter where I am spiritually, if this God is real, I want to get to know him. I want to know more about what he has to say. And especially right now in life, like as young adults, we have to make a ton of decisions. And we can't just like opt out of a lot of decisions. You guys know this. Uh, There's not a lot of things that we can just like, you know, we can be paralyzed with all the decisions. We can just stop making decisions, I suppose. But do you know that where you are right now in life, you are a grand total, you are the sum of all the decisions that you have made to lead you up to this moment. Do you know that? And we have a lot of decisions that we have to make. Some of them are really big, but some of them are kind of frivolous. You know, like right now, the, some frivolous decisions we have to make as a society here in Orange County is should we drop the trash Lakers and bandwagon the Golden, bandwagon the Golden State Warriors? Like, should we do that? That's something that we've got to think about, we've got to all think about and pray about. I'm thinking about it. If anyone wants to join with me, I'll do it. Um, I just need like one other person to help me, and I'll, uh, it's easy for me to get riled up about something. But th- like that's that's one like thing that's kind of not really a big deal. But there are like bigger questions that we have like been asking ourselves probably in this season of life. Like one is like, do where do I need to go to college? How many of you guys felt like anxiety about where to go to college if you went to college? Go to GCU. <laughs> we have a GCU uh, employee here, so lobes up. Um, maybe like, what major do we need to take? Like, do I need to change my major? Do I need to change my major again? I changed my major three times in college. Like, maybe you're like, okay, do I need to, well, maybe I don't need to go to college. I need to go to like this trade school. I need to work for this company or I need to do this thing over here. I need to figure out what it is I need. Like, there's a lot of decisions that need to be made. And this is a popular one. Do I date this person or do I date this person? Or if you're like, for me for a long time, I have nobody to date. Um, I, what do I do? Like, 
I don't know what you said. Um, or maybe you're just like, okay, if you're dating for a while, all right, is this the person I'm supposed to marry? Or is this some, like, do I need to keep looking? There are big decisions that happen. Or maybe you're like, do I, do I move away from my friends and family to take this job? Or do I stay local? Or do I try to like pursue this dream that I have over here? Or do I just do the, the, the thing that I, I know I probably should do? Or maybe you're like, okay, when, when, if you're married, you're like, when do we start having kids? Do we have kids now? Do we wait later? What do we do? There's so many big decisions that we have to make here and now, and right now more than ever before in the history of our lives as young adults. We have to make a lot of decisions, a lot of tough decisions. And this is the time now where we desperately need guidance. Would you agree? Would you want somebody to help you? And I don't, I don't know about you, but like as a young adult, there have been times in my life where I really, I've really had to, like, to make these critical decisions that were like life-altering. And I was just like praying that God would show up and just tell me what to do. How many of you guys just wanted God at some point to say, God, just show me what to do, and I'll do it. I just need you to show me. Like, I just, God, can you tell me what it is? Do I date this person? Do I, do I take this job? Do I do this or do I do that? And sometimes I would be so frustrated because God was not doing and speaking to me in the way that I wanted him to speak to me. And I would get to these moments where I'd be so frustrated with God that I would actually start giving God ultimatums. Have you guys ever done this? Where you said, all right, God, and you like put God in a box to, to fit whatever thing that you want to happen. And you're like, all right, God, if I'm supposed to date that person, I want her to message me on Instagram first. And then I'll know if she starts talking to me, then that's something I need to pursue. Then I'll tell her, I think the Lord wants us to marry. That's not, he, he doesn't, by the way. That, don't do that. It's not, that's not a good thing. Or, or maybe you're just like, okay, God, do I take this job? What do I do? And you're waiting for like the clouds to part and you're waiting for the light to shine down and the angelic ah, to, to, to be sung and you want manna to fall from heaven into shapes on the ground that, that form letters and the letters form the name of the business that you need to apply for and the job that you need to take. How many of you guys have ever wanted God to speak to you like that? Am I the only one? Like, this is what I was, and for a long time, like, I, and I kind of like, you know, we don't, we know that's like, probably God's not going to do that. But like, in our heart of hearts, sometimes we want God to speak to us that way, right? And sometimes, some of us can get so frustrated because God is not talking to us the way we want. We're like, God, give me a message. Give me a sign. Can you, can you give me direction? Can you just tell me what to do? And so many times we've waited and we've hoped that God would talk to us. And hope that God would speak to us. Have you ever felt that way? Like frustrated because God wasn't working in the way that you wanted him to work? Some of you may be in here and you're mad at God currently. Because he's seemingly silent on some big things that you really need his help on. And you're mad at him because you're, like, you're just not talking in the way that you're talking to other people that I, that I hear about. And, you know, we try to reconcile what we hear at church when we, when we hear that God is a God who is, like, involved in, like, the intricate details of our lives. We hear that. We hear that God wants to speak to you and be close to you. And you see other people have this, like, special relationship with God. And you feel like God speaks to them all the time. But you're over here and you're like, I don't feel like God speaks to me at all. If that's you today and you feel like maybe other people get it, maybe super Christians get it, but I just haven't heard God the way I've been wanting to hear him. I, I want to remind you tonight, and this whole point of the series is to remind you of something you probably already know if you've been in church, but hopefully to present it to you in a new way. God, who is our Father, so desperately wants to be close to you, and he wants to talk to you, and he wants to be with you, and as a kid who he loves, he wants to impart wisdom to you, and he wants to give you guidance, and he wants to be with you every step of the way. This is who God is. So tonight, as we begin this series called Hearing from God, today, this, this evening, I want to take the rest of the time and just and kind of lay the foundation for the rest of the series is going to hang on. Like tonight, I want to, I want to talk about the way that God actually speaks to us and how God has actually revealed himself to us. 
And there are two ways I want to talk about today that, that, the, that Scripture tells us that God communicates to us. You know, six years ago, I just saw my Facebook, uh, like, memories thing. I love the Facebook memories thing. Um, but I was in, it just reminded me, I was in Nepal on a, on a mission trip, and it was with my dad and a couple other people. And Nepal is beautiful, guys. I don't know if you've ever been there. Um, but it's like, it's, un, it's unreal. And they, we went to um, this city where the Himalayan mountains were. And it was like, one, like just even saying the Himalayan mountains just sounds so cool, right? Like that's, that sounds awesome. And we, uh, we had some friends from Nepal, and, and they told us, if you go to the city, then you need to paraglide off the Himalayan mountains. And I am not an unnecessary risk kind of person, all right? We have a guy in Young Adults named Eric who's jumped out of an airplane 200 times, over 200 times. A lot? He's like doing this now. He's done it a lot. Like hundreds of times he said. Like I am not that kind of person. I have a risk category in my life called unnecessary risk and I don't do a lot of those things. But I found out the day before that my dad was going to do it. And so I'm like, well, I can't let my dad do it and me not do it. And so we went up and we drove up the Himalayan mountains one morning and we get there and they start, you know, the, the guy, you strap onto a guy and then they, then they you know, put the, the, the harness on and they have like the the whole parachute wing thing that you just kind of float. And I started to get a little bit more nervous when I realized that the parachute float things, I can only, the best way I can describe them to you is they have the consistency and durability of a Walmart plastic bag. And I looked at that and I'm like, this is the thing that is, okay, all right. But then I saw other people do it. And I'm like, I guess I don't want to be the one that, you ever get in those moments where you're like, I'm terrified, but I'm the only one freaking out, so I guess I'm just going to do this and like pretend I'm going to be okay. And so I get, we get, I get strapped onto this guy, and he goes, when I say run, you run. When I say stop, you stop. And I'm like, okay. Then he goes, run, run, run. I'm like, I'm so sorry. Okay. And then, and so we just like, we just take off the mountain. I don't realize, it's just like we're falling off a mountain this whole time. And so I'm going, and like my heart just like, okay, all right, here we go. And like I'm, you know, I, would, I was singing like the Tim McGraw song, Live Like You Were Dying, probably in my head. I'm like, I, I went skydiving. I'm doing it now, you know. Um, and we get up there, and then we just kind of like, the wind kind of takes you up like this, and it breaks you up and up and up. And like they told me that you could actually stay up there for days and weeks if you wanted to with how the wind currents are. And I'm like, I don't want to do that. Um, and so like you can go up, go up, go up. And like, I'm not going to lie to you guys, I was terrified. I actually, I have all the footage for it, I can show you later. Would have been great to show you there, I was just thinking about that now. But um, it, it was incredible, and I was like, you, you're kind of going up, going up, and then you see like all the other flyers in the air, and then I'm just like, oh my gosh, oh my gosh, oh my gosh. And then like we get up to like this really high altitude, and all of a sudden for a second I'm like, okay, I'm just going to like stop being scared for one second and try to enjoy this. And I, and I looked down, and like we were the highest I've ever been in my life outside of an airplane. Again, with a Walmart plastic bag on top of me. And I looked down, and I was like, honestly, guys, like I was, w- once I got past the fear, it was like this awestruck moment. Because I got to see from a different perspective I never saw from. And I got to see like how the mountains, like a, a perspective of the mountains and how they moved into the hills and how they moved into the ground. I got to see how the water from a different perspective went into the seashore. I got to see like the people on the ground like ants. It was marvelous. It was like, it like did something in my heart. Like it was so beautiful. I did end up throwing up right after that. I, that is true. I, I did vomit twice. And like, he was not pumped to be attached to this dude, but uh, it was unbelievable. Aside from the throw up and the fear, um, it was unreal. And we got down, and I, like I was just like struck. I'm like, man, Nepal's beauty is unmatched, unbelievable. It was it was just one of those things that was just so so incredible. And I was just thinking, when this topic of hearing from God, have you ever been like awestruck by nature? Have you ever like gone up to the mountains or like drove driven along the coast and just been like you like look at something and you're like. Ah, oh, that's awesome. How many of you guys have ever felt that? When you're looking at something, you're on the beach, and you're like, oh, this is just, oh, this is so cool. This is amazing. And man, this is, and you know what's, what's crazy? It's like this experience of like being awestruck by the nature around us. Like this, this happens in everybody, whether you're a Christ follower or not. There's like this, there, it's, it's this idea that everybody can see the beauty of what's going on in the world and they respond to it in like something that like kind of bubbles up in our hearts because we gaze upon something that's so true 
and it's so real and it's so knowable and something happens to us. And this is actually like proven by social science and scientists. There's, this, there's this, a lot of psychologists have studied this. And they actually talk about the, uh, like the people who spend a lot of time by the seaside, like on the beach. They actually, it changes the, like their mind and their body. It says this. They said that staring at the beach occasionally, or actually, changes the brain's, brain waves frequencies and puts you into a mild meditative state. How many of you guys have ever experienced that before? They, they said that listening to the waves activates the parasympathetic nerve system, which makes you more relaxed, which is crazy. They said, in addition, the negative ions in the sea breeze actually have a mood-boosting impact on you. You know, and when I talk about that, you're, not, you're probably not surprised to hear some of this because you've experienced it. You've, like, felt it. You, it's been real for you. And when I talk about the mountains or the beach or the waves or looking out of an airplane, when you see something so incredible, like we have this sensation of awe, why is that? Why is this like a universal shared experience for everybody? And the answer is because God's actually speaking to us. God actually is revealing himself to us. And when we think about how God has revealed himself to us, you know, the, the Greek word for, for revelation, it actually is this word that means like to unveil something. Like so if something is behind a curtain and you unveil it, like this, this word revelation is like when you, when you peek behind the curtain, when you see something that you previously wasn't, weren't able to see. And this is what God is doing for us. And he reveals himself he like, he, to us in two ways. He actually lifts the curtain back so you can actually see him in two distinct ways. And the first way is this, and if you're taking notes, I encourage you to like pull up a note app on your phone or whatever. Make sure you write this down because this is a foundational part of this whole series. The way that God reveals himself to us initially is through something called general revelation. And this is exactly the thing that I was talking about. Now, this refers to the general truths that can be known about God through nature and our conscience. In Romans 1.10, Paul actually talks about this and describes the sensation that we have all felt. It says, he says this, he says, for, his invi- for, God's, for God's invisible attributes, main, namely his eternal power and divine nature, have been clearly perceived ever since the creation of the world in the things that have been made. So they, were th- they are, are without excuse. Paul says that ever since the beginning of the world, since the world was created, God's attributes, namely his power, his eternal power, and his divine nature, we can perceive it. Whenever we look upon a beach, we see a mountain. When, when, you, got, when you guys are impacted by something so just awe-inspiring, that is God revealing himself to you and saying, I am real. I'm here. You're living in the world that I created. And Paul was, was saying here, he's saying just by, by living in and experiencing the beauty and the majesty of this world that you and I get to experience, interact with, touch, handle, be with, look at, God's power and divine nature can be known because it is so true and it is so real and it is so knowable. Have you ever looked underneath a microscope, like in science class? Like, have you ever seen the world that, is, that you see underneath the, our world? It's phenomenal. It's, there's like a whole, there's a whole ecosystem almost underneath what we cannot see here in this, with our own eyes. We've discovered something new about general revelation. We've discovered something new about who God is that even in the microscopic things points to a creator, it points to someone who intentionally made that. You know, just like, just like when you uh, see like a beautiful painting or something and you marvel at its like intricacies and you see like the detail in it and the purpose and the intention with this painter, you, you, with this painting, you don't say, wow, this is, the universe is incredible. You say, no, 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 who painted this? Because this is incredible. I've got to talk to this person. The painting pointed to the painter. 
And in the same way, God, what he's doing, when he reveals himself to us by letting us live in this planet, on this, when, we, when we are awestruck by his creation, it points us to the creator. And maybe today you've ne- you feel like you've never heard God speak to you. Drive down the, the PCH at some point in the next couple of weeks. He, you may not feel he's speaking to you, but he is shouting to you through his created things and through what nature is. He's revealed us himself through this general, general revelation through, through nature, but it's not just nature. He reveals himself to us in a different way with this, and it's through our conscience. You know, something crazy happened uh, on Sunday night, which we all know about. Um, it was the slap heard around the world. Um, we all saw all of the memes. We all saw all of the news outlets covering this. Uh, our church staff here in Huntington Beach, uh, it, our staff meeting was derailed by comments and thoughts about what was going on with Will Smith and Chris Rock. And I know that we were not the only staff meeting to be derailed uh, on a Monday morning. Um, why is that? Why is one person slapping another person on live TV? Why did that like impact our society? Have you noticed that? Like, our, our news outlets are covering it. We have political pundits who are offering takes. We have, like, all of, all of YouTube is filled up with stuff. All of TikTok is all the memes that are going on with this. You and I have probably talked about it. Why is that? Have you thought about that? It's because God has revealed himself to us not only through nature, but through the conscience that he has given us. He has actually hardwired into us the law of God And we know collectively that what happened, that it's not good to slap another person. Or maybe you're here and you're just like, man, it was not good what Chris Rock said. And why do we think that? Why, why do, like we, not Christian people and Christian people alike are having similar takes about what is right and what is wrong. You shouldn't slap somebody. You shouldn't make fun of somebody. Why are we all collectively agreed with this whole thing? It's because God has revealed himself to us by our nature, our collective conscience. And the Apostle Paul, the next chapter after he's done done talking about this natural, general revelation through nature, he talks about how God has revealed himself to us in our hearts. And he says this in in Romans chapter 2. It says, for when Gentiles, and a Gentile is anybody who's not a Jew, so the law was given to Jewish people. It was, it was like for them to be a set-apart nation. Um, and this is what Paul was saying. He's like, for, for when Gentiles, you and me, non-Jews, uh, who, who do not have the law, we were not given the law, by nature, do what the law requires, they are law a law to themselves. Even though they do not have the law, they show that the work of the law is written on their hearts while their conscience also bears witness, and their conflicting thoughts accuse or even excuse them. Paul is saying that even though the people who, God did not specifically give the law to Gentiles, to non-Jewish people, but Paul is saying here that even if you are not specifically, the, the, the law was given to back in the day, there's actually a law that is written on our hearts. And you know this to be true. You know this to be true. You know this because no one would say that rape is good. That that violates this law that is written on our hearts that God has revealed because it is the character and the nature of God. We know that is not good. We know that, that, that lying is not good. Even if you are not a Christ follower, you see all the sitcoms about not lying. You see all the things that are made by godless people who promote things like it's not good to rape people. It's not good to lie. It's not good to steal. Why is that? It's because God has spoken to us. And if we would just quiet down enough to listen to the law that is written on our hearts, we would actually hear a little bit more about what God is trying to tell us. And this revelation is called general because it is general. It's not super specific. It, it really is just kind of like a, ah, that kind of rubs against, I don't, that, isn't, that doesn't fit with what I feel like it to be right. And this, it, this reveals a general sense from the, from the nature that is created in our world that there must be a creator of it. 
And it makes sense that because of the things that we feel, there must be someone who is in control and is, has authority over stuff because we feel it. And this, this, what general revelation does, is it points to the other way that God actually reveals himself to us. And the second way that God does this is through special revelation. Special revelation. And special revelation simply means that God has revealed himself to us by the person of Jesus and the words of Scripture. That we know generally that there's, there is, there, there's a need for some sort of higher power, that there is like we, have, we need like some higher authority because it is written on our hearts. We see it every day. But what does it point to? It points to Jesus and it points to what the Bible has to say. Do you know the Bible is incredible? And I don't know where you stand on whether you or not you believe the Bible, but if you want to hear from God, then this is how God has chosen to reveal himself to us. And the Bible is incredible because God miraculously guided the authors of the Bible to correctly record his message to mankind while still using their own style and personality. The Apostle Paul writes very different than, than, than John, who writes different than, than Matthew. He, like, he was able to retain their personality and their style, but still give the message of what he wanted to say. The Word of God is living and active, says in Hebrews 4. The Word of God is inspired. It is profitable and sufficient in 2 Timothy God determined to have the truth about him recorded in a written form because he knew about the unreliability of the oral tradition. And he knew that dreams and visions could be misinterpreted and misguided. And so what he decided to do was to to record everything that God wanted you to know about him in the Bible. This is what God said. And he understood all these things, and God decided to to reveal everything that humanity needs to know about him, what he expects, and how to be saved. Everything, all that stuff that God wants to speak to you is recorded in the scriptures. And this is incredible, because if you want to know what God has to say for you, if if you're just standing here and you're like, God, speak to me, I don't know what to do, please help me. Can I just, like you've heard this before, but can I just like tell you again one more time, God has spoken to us, and he's revealed himself to us through his word. And maybe if you're not convinced, I'm, I, I don't know if I can convince you about it, but I think there is something when we talk about scripture and we, we're dealing with young adults, there is a general sense of skepticism with it. And I get it. I get it. But one thing I think it's always interesting is to, to think about the Bible as a whole. This, this next slide actually is from a quote uh, from Josh McDowell, and it says this. It says, the Bible was written over a period of 1,500 years in various places, stretching all the way from Babylon to Rome. The human authors included over 40 persons from various stations of life. You had kings who wrote this. You had peasants. You had poets. You had hand, or like herdsmen. You had fishermen. You had scientists. You had farmers, priests, pastors, tent makers, and governors. It was written in the wilderness. It was written in a dungeon. It was inside of palaces and prisons on lonely islands and military battles. Yet it speaks with incredible agreement and reliability on hundreds of controversial issues and subjects. And yet it tells the one story from beginning to end, God's salvation of man through Jesus Christ. No one could have made this up. No one could have, could have construed what is in here. The only explanation for the Bible is that this is a miracle, special revelation from God to man. The Bible is, is, we have is inspired. It, it speaks to us. And if we listen to it, God will guide us. And you'd actually be surprised at how many things the Bible talks about and says in this, in this book. But I think you'd also be surprised at how many things it doesn't specifically say in this book. So if this is the way God speaks, we need to be able to listen to it. And we need to be able to set the, the groundwork of our lives if we're, our intent is to hear from God 
then we need to be aware of the, of the two ways that God has actually spoken to us. But listen to this. If you want to be someone who listens to what God has to tell them, you need to be committed to God's word. And you need to have like this personal, like trying to, to get in God's word and to like be all about it. But listen, I, I, I also want to encourage you, if you want to hear from God, really, through God's word, then you can't do it all by yourself. And this is actually good news. Because I don't know about you, but sometimes I can get in here and I can start reading things and I don't totally understand it and I'm just like, I stop and it's like really, have you guys ever, have you ever done that? Am I the only one? Um, but what's incredible about the plan of God is that we were never supposed to just do this by ourselves. In fact, you can't really do it by yourself because this is, you know what can happen if you try to like totally keep your, your spirituality by yourself and try to, you, to learn to speak from God by yourself? This was what can happen. You can be reading something and you can get to a part that you just don't like. And you can be like, ooh, don't love that. I'm going to skip down to the other part. Or maybe you find another part that offends you and you just kind of like, you start interpreting what you're reading based on what you want rather than what is actually written. And what the beauty about being a part of a church community is that we gather together in places like this and at small groups and Sunday morning and all the different things and we get to, we get to come alongside each other. I love my small group because we, can, we open up the scriptures and we talk about what it means and we talk about how, what it, God, God is actually speaking to you through this. And you, and I, you learn something whenever, whenever another person kind of gives, gives you like, oh my gosh, you, I think I had it wrong. I, I, think, I, think you, I think you actually hit the nail on the head with what God is trying to say here. And what's great about this, especially in the day and age that we live in now, we're not just unifying around the Bible in our church group together. We actually unified around the church, of, like in, the, in the, the church fathers of the ages over the last 2,000 years. Like so much about what the Bible has to say has been looked over and studied and had counsels about. And you could, we can join with the church fathers and say, this is what we believe the Bible has to say. And it kind of takes the pressure off of like, gosh, i got to figure out every single little thing about the Bible. I don't even know. No, you were never supposed to figure it out by yourself. It works when you're in community. It's too hard to do completely by yourself. You need to read by yourself, but you can't stay by yourself. That's why we're here today. Hebrews 10, 24 and 25 says, Let us consider how to stir up one another to love and good works not neglecting to meet together, as some, of their ha- some are in the habit of doing, but encouraging each other all the more as you see the day drawing near. God has revealed himself to us through creation, through our conscience, through the person of Jesus and what he did and then what was written about him that's inspired and living and active that can totally change your life. And I hope today that as we set the groundwork for the rest of the series, as we like try to learn what it means to actually hear from God, that we wouldn't just like stop and then like hear another message. You've probably heard something similar to this before and leave because that can happen too. But we need to be people who like actually are trying to figure out, okay, what, what do I need to do? What's my next step? And I have just a couple takeaways for you tonight that I, that I hope that you can take away from this. Maybe this is like, this is kind of like a, you know, more of a ethereal message. But today, I, I hope that based on what we heard today, that we can be people who worship God because of what he's created and how he's wired us. Like this should, the, the general revelation should like cause you to like, God, you're so good. You're so, like your handiwork the heavens declare God's majesty. The skies, they show his handiwork. God, just it should draw you to worship God. And then number two, thank him for revealing himself through Jesus and his word. You realize for generations before Jesus came, they didn't have God's word. They didn't have the person of Jesus. They were waiting for the person of Jesus for a long time. Ever since Genesis 3 in the garden, 
and sin entered in the world, everything, the whole Bible after Genesis 3 was leaning forward to the arrival of Jesus. And we, 2,000 years after the birth of Jesus, have the best vantage point ever that we get to see the, in the result of what Jesus has done. This is incredible. And number three, we need to, today, let's begin to search for him. A couple scriptures for you. Proverbs 8, 17. If you, want to, if you want to search for him, if you want to know God, if you want to begin today, like I, I don't know exactly what to do, but I'm just going to try today. This is, what, this is what the scripture says. These are promises from God's word that if we actually listen to it, God will do it. It says this. He says, I love those who love me, and those who seek me diligently will find me. Can you seek God diligently this, over the next four weeks? Pro, Deuteronomy 4.29, it says, uh, but from you... But from there you will seek the Lord your God and you will find him if you search after him with your whole heart and with all of your soul. Can you search for the next four weeks? Could you search after God with your whole heart and all of your soul, like trying harder than you've ever tried before? And when you feel stuck, just keep going forward. In James 4, one of my favorite verses, the most comforting verses to me, it says, draw near to God. And he will draw near to you. If you, want to, if you want to hear God, if you want to hear the voice of God in your life, you need to know how he speaks. And you need, to, you need to search for him. You need to seek God. You need to linger with God in the places that you feel like he's revealing himself to you. You need to dive into his special word. And you need to bring your questions to this community this is how God speaks to us. Wouldn't it be great if by the end of the series we would be a people who began the work of like being confident in their relationship with God? They'd be confident that God actually speaks to them. That you are confident that, okay, I, I may not know exactly everything, but I, I feel good because God's with me and I feel him close. Wouldn't you want that? What if, what if you were somebody in here? Would, would Huntington Beach be changed if you like actually felt close with God and you felt like he was talking with you every day? Would your life be changed if you were able to make decisions knowing that God is with you and that he wants to speak to you and guide you? You just need to search for him. He's not, he's not hard to find. He, he promises if you really search for me, you'll find me. So tonight, let's pray. And let's ask God to begin a journey within us for the next couple weeks.